Good morning, fellow township officials. Let's start our morning with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. All rise. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good morning. This session today is the Minnesota Association of Townships short course for clerks and treasurers day one. I am Tammy Houle and I represent District 3 with the Minnesota Association of Townships. On behalf of our association, I welcome you to these virtual 2021 spring educational courses. We realize this pandemic has been stressful for you in conducting your township duties, and we hope these presentations will assist you in providing services to your communities. MAD is still operational, and we are here to assist you in any way we can. Should you have any questions over anything presented in these courses or any township issues, please let us know. You can use your chat for questions during the presentations. Today's presentations and presentations on other days are being recorded so that if you or other township officials are not able to attend, you can view the recorded sessions. A link for those recorded sessions will be on our website. Some of the courses are offered live two times to accommodate township officials engaged within their communities in order to provide more than one opportunity to participate. We have presentations for supervisors, new township officers, and clerks and treasurers on different dates so you can attend one or all. Matt is excited to have Jeff Kruger join us as our new executive director. Jeff is a supervisor in New Market Township and joins us with experience as a small business owner. He has been active in Matt training and legislative events for several years. He joins us on March 29th. Thank you for attending and I hope you enjoy all of our presentations today. Have a good day. Okay, thanks, Tammy. Um, this is Leslie Rosedahl. I'm our meeting host for the day and kind of running the things in the background. Our first speaker is Lori Stalker. Uh, take it away. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Welcome to my home. We are going to be talking about clerks and treasurer's duties. Um, I have been the clerk for South Harbor Township in Mille Lacs County since 2006. I've been a trainer with Matt since 2017. I'm sure I've talked to several of you on the phone or in person, email. Uh, we're gonna go through uh, clerks and treasures. Uh, statutory duties now, these statutory duties for clerks and treasures, um, they overlap and there's a reason for that. We wanna make sure things are getting done. Now the statutes, we're gonna be using um, the statutes and we're gonna be using best practices. Here's the statutory, the statutes for the town clerks and treasurers. Shall be the duty of the town clerk or treasurer on and on. How do we, it's so vague, how do we define this? With the help of the state auditor um, and the use of best practices as our guides, we're gonna to try to make our way through this today. If you're the clerk, the statutory duties are to keep a true record of the town board proceedings. You have custody of the records, books, and papers, record minutes for every town meeting, the annual meeting, um, preserve all counts audited by the town board and enter them in the book of records. And the book of records can be a three-wing binder. That's what I use. I just keep all of my, my financials, my minutes. I have a separate book for minutes, a separate book for resolutions and ordinances, and then a separate one for my financials. It can just be a, doesn't have to be a fancy book. Just needs to, you just need to have those. 
and record every request for a special vote or special town meeting and properly post the notice of those that you posted those. And there's a sample of that on our website. It's GF3000. That's a sample of, of the form you fill out for when you post things. Get it to go. Statutory duties continued. Post as required by law, fair copies of all bylaws made by the town. Bylaws are your resolutions and make a signed entry in the book of records. Again, three ring binder, time, place, and where you posted those. Record in full all ordinances passed in your ordinance book. Yes, you do need to post resolutions. Post them up in your library. They'll probably take them down right away, but you need to get them posted. And then to furnish the annual board of audit, every statement from the county treasurer of money paid to the town treasurer and all other information about fiscal affairs. In other words, supply a copy of receipts and disbursements for the year. To perform other duties by law, the clerk is you are as the clerk, you are the election administrator for the township. So you need to make sure that we're going to be going more in detail with that in a little bit. Payroll, either the clerk or treasurer do it first, but you both should be doing payroll separately. Audit reports, this is an implied duty because the clerk gathers and presents the information required to complete the reports for the board of audit. The following, now we're going to begin to best practices. The easiest way to make certain you're following best practices is to use the legal compliance audit guide from the state auditor. Go to the state auditor's website. The compliance guide is on there. It is downloadable. And the townships references are in chapters one through five and chapter 10. Accounting for each board meeting, audit the invoices and generate a claim for each invoice. Auditing the invoices, just make sure that that invoice that you're getting is the things that you did receive. And then prepare a claim list for approval and net pay distribution report if the clerk does payroll. This can come from the treasurer as well. As long as you're both keeping records, separate records, these reports can come from either one. Record all disbursements. They'll start as claims if you're using CTAS. A supply a list of the claims to the treasurer. Now, sometimes the treasurer will do this first and the treasurer will get the claims to the clerk. Um, does it matter who does it first as long as you're doing it? Both of you are doing it. And then a triplet a copy of receipts. You need to have the three copies of the receipts. One is, stays with the clerk, one stays with the treasurer, and one should be going on your bank with your bank statements or kept in the, in the book. You should be balancing your bank statement and prepare a cash control statement for proof. Um, and then compare your cash control statement with the treasurer as well. Uh, deliver copies of the agenda minutes of the last meeting, any action items the board needs to, to take care of, and the treasurer's report at least three days prior to the meeting so that they know what they're going to be coming up against for the meeting so they can be prepared. At the board meeting, have a copy of the agenda minutes, claims list, receipts register, and disbursements register for the public. Uh, anything you give the board in their packet, you need to have a public copy of that. Record in detail the minutes supporting the actions by the board. Um, minutes are the history of your township. Make them your own. And just make sure that you're, you're accurate on um, when you do those minutes. Use your notary stamp for verification. I always use my notary stamp on anything that my board signs so that it's proof that, I, yes, that is their signature. Also, correspondence. Any mail you get, even junk mail, emails, snail mail, uh, phone calls, keep a, keep a list of the phone calls that you are doing throughout the month and supply that to the board. You as a clerk are not, you can't just throw away even junk mail. That's up to the board after they see it, what we recommend is to just have a garbage can at the end of the table and they can throw it away if they want to throw it away. At the meeting, participate in the discussions, 
and keep the board informed of past minutes, resolutions, anything like that, that might affect the decision they're about to make. So you gotta keep on top of the board, make sure that they're, they're going by what they have in their previous minutes, any resolutions, any decisions that they've decided to make, um, to stay on top of it. When I first got on the board uh, as the clerk, my board said my biggest, my biggest duty was to keep them out of jail. And so far I have done that. So yay, Lori. <laughs> and also have contracts, note of contracts, any contracts the board, board is going to get into. There is a sample contract on our website. You know, you can, you can download it and then make it your own. Uh, the contractor's pack, it's gonna be the W-9 current certificate of uh, liability workers comp if they have any employees and also that signed contract. You should have a contract with your anybody you're contracting with for your roads, anything like that. You should have a contract for them and look at it every year during your reorg meeting so that you have a current contract on file. And also when they make a motion to for this contractors to use this contractor, um, the motion could include that the contract is not valid until the contractor provides the proper documentation. So the contract might not, we might not even pay them. I have not paid contractors. I need from them uh, their certificate, their W-9. I need all that information before they're going to get uh, that first invoice paid. After the meeting, get your meeting, your minutes typed up or written up as soon as possible. Take notes at the meeting, then write up your minutes as soon as possible while it's still fresh in your mind. Dispose of correspondence that the board has already seen and doesn't want to save. Enter your claims into the, into your disbursements through posting of the claims, and then complete the clerk's portion of the claims and file the claims. What we mean by that is make sure that you're signing that those claims as the clerk. There have been, um, the clerk, make sure you sign it and put the date that it was paid. The state auditor is citing townships that for not having this part of the claim complete, completed when they do their audits. So make sure you as a clerk are signing those claims and dating those claims. Again, keep that permanent file of the, the minutes that like I said, it can be in a three ring binder. Um, there's people that are keeping them on um, their zip drives. I have not done that yet. There's a lot of townships that are scanning all their information and keeping it that way. Um, it's entirely up to you how your township does that. And then take care of any business that the board designated at that meeting. These are the required forms for employees. Elected officials are employees. Either the clerk or treasurer can get this information um, and then keep a separate file for each employee with these forms, the W-4, the I-9, the para enrollment form, even if they decide not to participate in para, the Minnesota new hire, yes, you need to do this for elected officials as well. Um, and process your payroll at least monthly if you meet on a monthly basis. Your quarterly 941s and your annual 944s. Um, for para, you can look at their manual for the different plans and their, their requirements for filing that para. Chapters three, four, and five are the ones that you look at on that para manual. W-2s, W-2s can be completed longhand. You can enter them online. Um, otherwise, you can use CTAS to do that as well. 1099s, issue one to each contractor that is not incorporated that you have paid at least $600 to. Attorneys, they get a 1099 from dollar one. Your para, your salary deduction report, that's on the para website. Do that um, every month if you pay, if you meet monthly, quarterly, if you meet quarterly, whenever you pay that out, even if you didn't have any unemployment. Minnesota withholdings, Work comp, complete your work comp audit, it, it, which is due in January, if your work comp is through MADIS. If you don't have work comp through MADIS, it's something that you might wanna look, look into. We have great rates, something you can call the, the MAT office and talk to somebody on the MADIS. You're not finished yet. The job's not done yet. 
on this job. I'm sure like many of you, come on, be the township clerk. All you have to do is attend meetings once a month and take minutes. It's hardly, that's just the start. Posting and publishing your meetings. Most meetings can be posted. What I do at, during our reorg meeting, which is coming up next month, I'll go through the calendar and I'll actually put the dates and the times of all of our meetings. And then I post that outside our town hall and that's um, gonna be our meeting schedule for the year. I also include in that our reorganizational meeting, our board of audit meeting. Those are always the same every year. So I make sure that the, that's on there too. Um, there's an affidavit of, of publishing that you should be getting from your newspaper. Whenever you publish anything, they should be sending an affidavit um, of publishing for that as well. Elections, you as the clerk, you are the election administrator um, for all the township, uh, for all the elections, township election, primary elections, general elections, special elections. You schedule the election judges and arrange for pickup and delivery of the election materials to and from the county auditor. You are also required to take election judge training with an additional head judge training. Uh, you could be the head judge. We recommend that you not because you are the election official. You'd wanna have somebody else be um, your head judge to take care of any problems that might come along. Your board of audit, you must balance with the treasurer at the board of audit and be held, it can be held at the regular town meeting. We have our board of audit um, right before our regular monthly board meeting in February. Um, that board of audit meeting needs to take place at least one week prior to the annual meeting. Make sure you got a copy of those of the audit, what you did. There are samples of board of audit forms on our website. Um, and just make sure you have that all available for your annual meeting. You convene your annual meeting. You start your annual meeting and you take minutes. You can act as a moderator, but it's not a good idea. You need to take minutes. You need to be listening. Within three days after the annual meeting, have those minutes ready for the moderator to sign along with your signature as the clerk. I always have two copies. One copy is a, a watermark draft on it. We sign that one. And then I also have one that doesn't have that on it. Um, and we sign both of them, the moderator and I as the clerk. Um, we do that in case the moderator moves out of the state, no longer with us, something happened. You'll have those that moderator signature on the annual meeting minutes for the following year for approval. Um, have your books at the annual meeting for the public to view. I always have um, the disbursements register and the receipt register and my investments there so that they can look at it. And then also that board of audit, when you did your audit, have that uh, available is so they can see that you did balance between the clerk and the treasurer. I have my copy, I put my name on it. If my treasurer has her copy, she puts her name on it so that they know that from two separate books. Again, have the books available with the annual cash report. Implied duties. Give the oath of office. You are required to have a notary stamp in the handout packet. I did include what that notary is stamp looks like. Um, I get mine through Victor Lundin. He knows townships. There are other companies I have heard from clerks that are requiring the $125 or $130. You don't need to do that. You are, are a notary officio and you need to get that stamp. Since the clerk is the keeper of the books by statute, the clerk also files all papers for the township. If your township has a cemetery, park, recreational center, or town hall, if you rent out the town hall, it is typically the implied duty of the clerk to manage the bookkeeping involved with these. This may include providing information to township residents of items kept on file by the clerk. 
If the clerk does not keep regular hours, then requests from residents need to be honored within a reasonable time convenient for the clerk. Now, reasonable time is within an ASAP time frame, not with an attitude, if I don't want to do this, I will conveniently never have time. Um, there, there is a data practices that's it's different for if you're in the Twin Cities area and if you're in the outskirts. Um, other duties, if you clean the town hall, get compensation for that. Um, work on your newsletter, work on a website. Um, there are, I know Leslie has um, helped people with their website. She's a great resource. Leslie's a great resource for the Township Association. She does a great job. Um, and also, if you're not able to meet on a monthly basis because of our pandemic, Leslie can help you with a Zoom meeting or a webinar meeting or, or anything like that. So make sure that you're uh, keeping on top of that. Uh, clean the town hall. Now, gopher feet. I've heard some clerks say, I'm supposed to take care of the gopher feet. No, you're not unless you want to. Um, you don't need to change the oil in the town grader. You don't need to do any of that kind of stuff. If, you want, if you're into that, then you can do that. These are our clerk treasures. Um, information, I'm gonna leave this up on the screen for you to, to take it down. It's also on our website. If you have any questions at all, please, please let us know. We're here to help you. Um, so please reach out to us. They're the only dumb question is that question that's not um, asked. So speaking of questions, when from Catherine, when you get to employee information, my question is what form should be filled out by employees versus elected officials for payroll? Um, we went through that, all of all of those forms need to be filled out. The I-9, the W-4, the new hire, anything like that. What do you mean by both the treasurer and clerk should be doing payroll? You should both be doing all of the, the payroll. Um, as far as filing, only one of you need to file the, the 941 and the payroll report, that kind of thing. But you should both be keeping records of payroll separately. On page one of the auditor websites. Oh, the... Um, it's the uh, audit, what is it? The compliance guide. If you go to the auditor's website, you can get the compliance guide. No, there's a stamp, okay. Is statute audit is notary stamp any signatures? Is it's not statute. It's just saying that yes, they did sign this. Can the chairman sign instead of the clerk? Can the chairman sign? Roxanne, I need a little more information. Can the chairman sign what instead of the clerk? Uh, Sasha, can you keep an electronic record of meeting minutes, or do they have to be printed and stored in a binder? We get this from a supervisor question. You can have it, you can uh, record your minutes uh, electronically, as long as you have, my suggestion is to keep one copy off-site. You know, keep two copies of that electronically, but keep one in a separate place, like maybe a safe deposit box in case anything were to happen. David Peterson, contractors pack should also include the IC-134 from contractors affidavit relatively in the last couple of years. I see 134 with the contracts, contract for PAC. Thank you, David. I will add that for the next, take a note on that. I see 134. Okay, 134. Susan, do you have to publish your monthly meeting dates yearly? You do not have to publish your monthly meeting dates. You do, you should post them. At least post them. Like I said, I do that once a year at our reorg meeting. I post um, when our when our meetings are. Who approves the annual uh, Faye? Who approves the annual meeting minutes? That would be at your next year's annual meeting, and your residents do that. 
the resolutions need to be sent to the law library. Um, not that I'm aware of, William. I'm not aware um, that they have to go there. Pat, uh, no. Not that I'm aware of, the resolutions have to go. Can pay payroll be done quarterly if there are no employees, only board members? Payroll needs to be done. Um, you have to do that because of the new uh, payroll laws. Pay you need to pay people within 30 days of when they're uh, when they do the work. So you can't. You need to do it within those 30 days. Do you have to save email, Steve? Question from Steve. Do you have to save emails? Save emails. You can print them out and take them to the board meeting, so the board knows what's going on, and it's up to them if they want to save them or uh, get rid of them. Roxanne, can the chairman sign and date the bills each month? Yes. Um, I have my all of my supervisors um, approve the claims. They see everyone. So yes, the chairman can, can sign those. Notary, where to begin? Um, on, in the handout, the very, that I sent, that's on our website, there is, um, I put something in there for notaries and how to, how, how to start that paperwork. Stacey, if you have any questions on that, just give me a call or, or zip me an email. David, is there a good software package for accounting? We use CTAS. Um, that's through the state auditor's office. Uh, that's very, very user friendly for townships. Um, that's the only one I'm familiar with. I know QuickBooks, but not not for township business. Um, so CTAS is get a hold of the state auditor's office. It's a it's three hundred dollars to get it, and you can have as many copies as you need, and the updates are free. Um, Auditor's office supports CTAS and all of us trainers know CTAS as well. You mentioned a form which I understood as CF3000, is that correct? Yes, you, Eugene, yes, that is correct. That's the affidavit of posting. Date the each month. How am I doing, Leslie? Am I getting to all the questions? Is there a suggested pay rate for township officers on the MAT website or is it up to each township to determine? Elizabeth, um, there is no suggested pay rate. Every township um, pays differently depending on where you are in the state. Uh, some people get paid uh, a salary. Some clerks and treasurers get paid uh, a salary plus a monthly um, meeting fee, some get paid strictly hourly. Yeah, Lori, I think you're doing great. I think it might be helpful for people to, if you read the question, the full question, because they may not be following the Q&A. Okay. I mean, okay. Yeah, thanks, good yeah. job. Judy Hansen, what packet or pack are you referring to? I'm not sure if you're talking about the handout, Judy, that we, we have, um, Leslie sent the link for that. Yep, and I put it in the chat function, um, the schedule for today. And then there's two links that Lori has, one to kind of the presentation today, and one's a larger like Word document with a ton of information. It's handout number two. So um, both of those are in. You can find the link in the chat section or going on the Matt website um, and going to today's kind of where you registered. It's like right in that section, right on that page for today. Thanks, sorry. Yep. Catherine, can you explain 1099s and who gets them? Is it contractors that are not non-incorporated? Sorry, I didn't hear all of that. Yes, contractors who are not incorporated, who make who you have paid more than um, six hundred dollars to for the year. Uh, attorneys, like I said, attorneys get one from dollar one. So it doesn't matter how much you paid them. If it's $25, they need a 1099. Uh, where do we get the head election judge training? Uh, head election judge training it was offered through Matt, but it was for head election official training. Is this different? As a clerk, yes, it is different. Head election judge training, uh, your county auditor should be doing that. 
Um, if not, get a hold of them and find out from them where you should be getting your training. As clerks, we do the judge training, which is two hours, head judge training, which is another hour, and then we also have an extra hour for head election official training. When publishing, is there a certain section that it should be published in, legal or display ad? It should be when you publish anything in your newspapers, they usually put that in the public notices section. Um, and in a legal newspaper, you make, have to make sure that it's a legal um, newspaper. Uh, Roxanne, can you repeat who we can talk to about notary? We've paid for it in the past. You will pay, um, Roxanne, you will pay for your stamp, um, but not the $125 registration fee that, that some people are running into. Um, and it's, uh, like I said, Victor Lundin is who I go through and they do a, an excellent job. If, uh, one question from Kathy, if we are keeping our minutes electronically, how would we provide them at the supervisor's monthly meeting? You'd have to print them out um, so that they can sign them and then scan them for your, if you're keeping them electronically, scan them with the signatures. Uh, Shirley, IRS instruction said only have to do 1099 for attorney for $600 or more. Should they get a 1099 or a new form? Um, information I have is they get one no matter how much, but uh, surely I will go into that. Make sure that my what I'm telling you is correct. Douglas, who appoints a deputy clerk? Uh, you as a clerk appoint your deputy clerk. The deputy clerk and the deputy treasurer are appointed every time you get elected. So treasures that were elected or even re-elected, make sure you do another um, form to appoint your deputy. At a meeting a couple of years ago, you mentioned that it may be a good idea for the deputy clerk to have a notary stamp. Is that still true? Unfortunately, Don, it's not true anymore. Um, we're working on that statute um, because it doesn't say anything in there in the statute about a deputy being a notary. Um, we're gonna have to look into that more and hope maybe we can get some legislation through to, to talk to change that wording. Uh, Eugene, what is the purpose for supplying a copy of the claims to the treasurer before the meeting? Um, that is you as a clerk and treasurer should be keeping separate books. Um, if the treasurer does the claims first, they should be getting them to you before the meeting. Um, whoever does them first needs to supply to the other person that, that list of claims before the meeting so that they are balanced and they're on the same page. Uh, what if a supervisor does not turn in payroll or claims monthly and refuses to do so even though the rest of the town officers do? It states in our reorg meeting to turn in monthly. Uh, all you can do is keep on them, Michelle. Um, they don't want to turn it in. That there's nothing you can do about it except for just stay on them. Um, let them know that how important it is that they get those things into you monthly, especially claims. If you're talking about vendors, um, they're going to want that 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 money monthly. So all you can really do is just keep on them. Molly Weber, for C tasks, can there be people with just view mode if chairman wants to view it? Um, no, <laughs> there, Molly, there is no just to view mode. Um, if a supervisor wants to see C tasks, they should have it on their own computer. Do not let them um, have access to yours. Uh, there has been townships that have supervisors have gone in and changed things. Uh, 
So yeah, don't let them into yours. Um, if you have clerks and treasures appointed, can they get a 1099 instead of a W-2? Patricia, no. Clerks and appointed clerks and treasurers are employees. So they, they get a W-2, not a, they should be going through your payroll. Do attorneys sue? Do attorneys get a 1099 if they are incorporated? Yes, all attorneys get 1099s. Heidi, do I, did I miss the answer to both the clerk and treasurer do payroll? As a clerk, I do payroll through CTAS. The supervisors and treasurer all sign off on each other's request for payment. Is this enough? Heidi, bo Heidi, both the clerk and treasurer should be keeping separate books. Both the clerk and treasurer should be doing payroll separately. Um, just to make sure that two, four, two sets of eyes is better than one. Um, between the clerk and the treasurer, between my, myself and my treasurer, we've caught mistakes from each other. And that's the whole idea of having the two separate books. Deborah, if you were given a stipend when hired, can it be taken away by a different board? Um, can it be taken away? I, it, that's at your reorg meeting. You should be doing that at your reorg meeting. And can they take it away? I, if they take it away, I'd say find another clerk. <laughs> um, they can change it again. You're not going to do this for free. So that's up to your board what they want to do. But if they're going to take it away, that seems silly. Curtis, if your clerk refuses to get the notary stamp, are they required to have one? That is a good question. Um, it, it just means that you can notarize documents. I don't, I don't think there's a statute saying that you do, that you have to have a stamp, um, but I will check into that. For township to have a combined clerk treasurer position, where did I go? What should be done differently from those townships who have a separate clerk treasurer? Well. Townships that have combined clerk treasurer positions, you get have to go through an audit um, every five years, I think it is, or every two years. Uh, what we suggest is if you can get one of the supervisors to keep books as well, as long as you have two. Um, but like I like I said, combined clerk treasurer position, you get audited on a regular basis. Molly, with these questions, can we get answers to them sent to us? I don't know, Leslie, is there a way to print out all the questions or? Yeah, we can print out all the questions and a recording of this is gonna be available likely tomorrow on the MAT website as well. Great, thank you. Steve, just to clarify, once an email has been shown to the supervisors or it has been dealt with, there is no need to save an electronic copy. If, the, if it's been dealt with, unless it's your think in the future, the board thinks in the future, there might be some um, legal issues coming. Um, I have all of my emails in separate uh, folders in my in my email box. So my attorney emails, my road emails, I don't keep them on in my inbox, but I do keep ones that I think, especially when it comes to roads and um, legal attorney issues. If a contractor is LLC, do they need a 1099? Yes, I do believe they do. Jerry, would you mind repeating when to use the affidavit of posting? Use the affidavit of posting whenever you post something. So if you post um, a special meeting, make sure you have that affidavit of posting. So it's where you posted and the date you posted it. Do townships pay the deputy clerk an annual fee for or a monthly fee? That's entirely up to your board how you pay your deputy. It's just like how they pay the clerk and the treasurer. Uh, it's up to the board how they pay the deputies. Catherine, do election officials go through payroll and, and consider an employee? Elections do have to go through payroll. Um, 
So you need to get that information from them because um, they do need to go through payroll. It's up to them if they want to get taxes taken out, um, entirely up to them. Who is typically selected as a deputy clerk? Uh, whoever you think can handle the job if something happens to you or if you can't be there at a meeting, um, it's entirely up to you. If both clerk and treasurer do see pass and it matches, is that enough for payroll? As long as you match, yes. As long as you're both doing it and you match. Normally we pay uh, our annual meeting. Normally we pay the monitor for of our annual meeting. This year it was a new person. Do I need a W-4 for him in order to pay him for the meeting? No, he's, you can just do a claim for that. He's not necessarily a, a employee. It's just that one, that one time that he does that. Karen, we have an annual payment for the supervisors, clerk, and treasurer. Should this be monthly? We do pay, we do pay any hourly work done monthly. Um, that annual payment, as long as the hourly work is getting done within that 30 days, the annual payment is is the annual payment. Heidi. What all happens at the reorganization? We don't have one. Chair is decided at the first board meeting after the election. Um, the reorg meeting, if you go to our website, um, there's a whole list of stuff that you should be doing at your reorganizational meeting. Um, your bank, where you're posting, uh, your vice chairman. Um, there's, all, there's a whole list of things that need to be done at that reorg meeting. And um, again, it's on the website. For the supervisor who wants to view C task, provide a backup copy for the supervisor to load onto their own computer. There's a copy of C task. It's a picture at a point in history. It will change with the next receipt or disbursement, but the supervisor will have their questions answered. Yes. That's exactly what you can do. View C task backup copy. Okay. If you do have a notary stamp, are you allowed to char charge the township members if they want private personal paper stamp? No, you do not charge um, to, to notarize anything for your township residents. You are a notary, but you can't charge for it. Eugene, is there a special form for an affidavit of publishing? Uh, that comes, Gene, that comes from, should be coming from your newspaper. They should be and I believe there's one on our website, uh, a, a, a sample of the affidavit of publishing. I always get one with my um, a copy of the ad from the newspaper. Uh, Debbie, I have OSHA form 300A. I've been unable to file electronically with them. It was due March 1st, what can I do? OSHA form 300A, I have never heard of that Debbie. Um, can you zip me an email and we can, I can look into it more. Kathy, if the clerk is receiving the time cards, et cetera, from supervisors and other employees each month, how does the treasurer get that information also? Does that clerk photocopy the information, give it to the treasurer? I really thought only the clerk kept the private payroll information. The treasurer, Kathy, the treasurer does need to see that payroll so that they can um, put it in their system. You keep a copy, correct, of the private payroll information. Um, but the board can see uh, net pay. Uh, the treasurer should be able to, to see net pay. Um, if the public wants to know what people are being paid, they can only see the gross pay report. Uh, so either you can give them the original or you can make a photocopy of them and then destroy that photocopy when, after the meeting. Patricia, if supervisors only get paid $200 a year, do they need to get a W-2 at the end of the year? Yes, they need to get a W-2 at the end of the year. They are employees. Michelle, what is the new payroll law statute you're referring to? You say that it work, if work is 
and done and should be paid within 30 days. That is that was the new thing that came out last year, I think it was. Um, and I can't remember, it's the wage something or another. I can't remember exactly what it is. Um, Michelle, if you can zip me an email, I can get I can get that information back to you. Wage theft, that's what it is. Chris, we just have a notary seal, or do we need an actual stamp? The seal should work fine as long as you're, if, as long as you're um, making those, those papers official. Donna, is it recommended to use a dedicated computer for township records? It was shared that our computer could be collected for review of audit and otherwise records were being reviewed. You should have a separate computer for your township business um, because yes, and, as, and you should be having a separate email also for township business because if something comes up and you're getting all the township emails in your personal email, they can go through all your personal emails as well. So yes, it is recommended that the, you have a separate, completely separate computer for the township in case something were to come up and legally that they need to, to look at that computer. Sarah, in the past, we have been told that election judges that will not be paid more than 600 during the calendar year do not need to be paid through payroll. They can just be paid through the claim process. Um, that changed, Sarah. Uh, all election judges need to go through uh, payroll. Um, if it's under $600, they don't need a W-2. Um, but yes, they need to go through payroll. That did change in the last year or two. Pat, the moderator is an employee and taxes are taken out. Do we just treat him as a claim? If he's an employee, if the moderator is an employee, that's a, I would say, I would put him through payroll. If, uh, Lucinda and Petra out there and they know something different. Um, Pat, can you zip me an email, please? And I'll, I'll look into that more. When mentioned election official should go through payroll, are election officials and election judges the same? Would they need to do all the paperwork for an employee? Yes, election judges need to go through payroll. Uh, election official is, is the clerk who need to go through payroll for elections as well. Um, and like I said, it's up to them if they want to get um, taxes taken out. Uh, payroll for elections, you do not take para. If you're um, participating in para, you cannot take para out of election judge wages. Um, and yes, you do need to get the paperwork for your judges to go through payroll. If the county publishes notice of Board of Appeal and Equalization in the local newspaper, do I need to publish also? You don't need to publish, but they do usually send, send you something to post um, when that's going to be. Uh, Laura, I thought we could only notarize official township paperwork. We can notarize resident needs. Yes, you can notarize for residents as well. You just can't charge for that fee like some notaries do. Do supervisors need to sign their time cards each month? The supervisors should all see the time cards and they should be approving all of the time cards. Mary, I think we need a best practices guideline for assigning clerk and treasurer roles. It sounds like some of the clerks are doing both roles. Uh, yep, that's the, the, that's the way the statute is written. It's overlapping. Um, every township does it different. I do the claims first. I get all the bills, I do the claims first and send them to the treasurer. There's some townships, everything goes to the treasurer first. Um, the clerk is the keeper of the records. Um, so, yeah. Last year to balance my W3, I had to print W2 for the election day. Yes. We pay payroll once. Hmm. 
We pay payroll once a month after approved in monthly meeting, which is always more than 30 days for at least a portion of their work the previous month. Is that a violation? No, that's, you, you pay, you got to get it done as soon as you can. Um, I think Steve had talked about um, an exception for election, elected officials. When election judges are on payroll, do we exclude Social Security and Medicare? It's up to them if they want Social Security and Medicare taken out. It's their decision, not yours. Randy, it's hard finding new officers. Rather than a clerk treasurer combination and the additional audit, you can have a supervisor treasurer combo instead of without the additional outside audit. Do they understand that correctly? Uh, I don't think you can have a supervisor treasurer combo. Um, a supervisor, a supervisor can't also be the treasurer. I know it's hard to find people to run for office, um, but yeah, you can't have a combination supervisor treasurer. Please care, clarify if election judges get a W-2. If they make over $600, they get a W-2. Our county indicated in their notice for the Board of Appeal that it must be published as well. We've always done it in the past. They publish it, my county publishes it for me. So if your county doesn't publish it, then you need to publish it yourself. Why do supervisors have to sign all time cards if they sign the payroll report from CTAS? They don't. If they sign the payroll report from CTAS, that's fine. Uh, my supervisors like to see uh, every claim. So they, they sign all the, all the claims, all the payroll. It makes for the Board of Audit a lot easier as well. So if they just sign the payroll report, that's fine, as long as they do see what, what's going on. Would you please share the three separate three ring binders that you keep? One was for the minutes. What were the other two for? Um, I keep one for my minutes. I keep one for my financials, um, the monthly financials that the board signs, uh, the, the treasurer's report, the bank statements, all that in another binder. And then I have my ordinances and resolutions in a separate binder. What statute requires the board members to be paid monthly, not quarterly? There is no statute. Um, it's that whole wage theft thing that, that get people um, mixed up. So it's, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna look into that wage theft thing more. Um, I know Steve um, Fensky, our attorney, knows a lot more about it than I do. New to this role, the Board of Audit spooks me. Can you explain what is and what happens if we fail? Board of Audit, Travis, is just your board, um, your board of supervisors looking through the books, uh, the treasure books and the clerk books to make sure you match. Um, I have a three board, three supervisors on my board, and they each pick out a random receipt from the year and a random disbursement from the year, and they check my disbursement register and they check the clerk's disbursement register to make sure that they're in both. Um, as long as you're balancing every month with your treasurer, your clerk and treasurer, treasurer are balancing every month, the board of audit is nothing to be afraid of. Um, and you do just get together with your clerk and treasurer, get together before that board of audit and just go through each disbursement, each receipt, just make sure that they're in both of your records. I'm getting a refund of 680 from the IRS because of overpaying taxes. What should I be doing wrong as I use payroll distributions for doing the figuring of taxes due? Uh, Deborah, can you zip me an email um, and we'll look at that together. Can you explain the proper protocol for posting forums if two or more supervisors are judging together outside of meetings? Um, that's a violation of the open meeting law. If you have more, if more than you have a quorum of supervisors, um, that's a violation. You do have to post 
Um, if, for example, when we had short courses where we could actually get together and see people, um, I always posted that we were going to have two board members attending this um, training. No township business is going to be happening, um, but they're going to be together. So that's how we get around the open meeting. Can't stop them from talking about it. Just tell them they can't. <laughs> uh, where do we find the Board of Audit report? It's on our website. If you go to the information library um, and then search Board of Audit, there's a chapter in our, um, our handbook, our manual that talks about the Board of Audit and also uh, there's some examples. If you can't find it, uh, zip me an email. Lonnie, how do we keep para from automatically figuring for the election judges pay if a person has para taken out of their regular pay? When you put uh, election, when you're doing your payroll, you do have to do a separate, totally separate payroll. For, so this person will get two checks. Um, and when you're doing the election uh, pay, you can uncheck para if you go to uh, employee deductions, uncheck para, make sure that's zero, and then employer contribution, and make sure that's zero. That's only going to change for that um, that check. It's not going to change anything for um, any other payroll you do in the future. It's just that check. If your deputy clerk is hired position and not a resident of the township, can they be paid without deductions and use 1099 just as any contractor would be paid. No, um, your deputy clerk is considered an employee. Hired, hired. I mean, deputy clerks are not elected; they're appointed. Um, so any deputy needs to be done through payroll. I'll have to look at the wage theft law. That um, if you can send me an email about the. The wage theft, uh, Alyssa, send me an email with that link and we'll look at that better. The state auditor said my CTAS tables are corrected because of this date that they were loaded. My CTAS is on the same division as a treasurer, same tax tables, everything the same. Our payroll is one cent different through the rounding errors. The state cannot fix the issue. They said to add one line to the payroll to make the two CTAS balance. Uh, and the state auditor said to fix it the same way. Is this the official way to balance the C-test amongst when the state auditor cannot help? Um, I would do what the state auditor is telling you to do about uh, with C-test. Whatever they're telling you to do is what you need to do. Did you say that each person can decide if they want Social Security Medicare taken out? I was told many years ago that it is required even if they are retired. Please explain. What do they sign that says I don't have to take it out? I was talking about... Um, election judges only, not um, for supervisors monthly pay. So Cheryl, the, the, when I said the Social Security and Medicare, that was just for election judge pay. And Lori, uh, I, 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 um, I got behind in some of my um, questions for you. We might be caught up and we it's, it's 10 o'clock. So I wanna be mindful <laughs> of the time. Yep. I, I forgot to, or I, I, I got lost in kind of answering some of them and moving them over to the answered questions. Is there, is there any when you're scrolling through that I, that are pretty, um, that, that you think are important to answer before we move on to our next speaker? No, I think, um, I think I was going through them and I think I, I got all of them. If I didn't get your question answered, please zip me an email and I'll get them answered for you. Thank you, everyone. I hope I helped. I hope I didn't discourage you. Um, just keep on trucking and make sure that you give us what someone, one of us a call if you have any questions whatsoever. Thank you, have a good day. Thank you, Lori. And thanks all, we're gonna take a one minute break. Um, we are gonna then start up with our next speaker.